Welcome back everyone to the Hello World guys, this is another episode of the Raycaster game in C++ series and in this video we are going to continue by starting to implement our actual player movement and the uh, uh, you know player drawing functionality for because in the last video we had a basic 2D map drawing functionality. Now we need to have an actual player which will represent the camera from which we are going to cast out our rays so yeah that's also important. So for that I'm going to open up terminal here and I'm going to move into the directory where we created our Raycaster project and I'm going to open this up and go to full screen mode here and uh, in here we have got uh, our main.cpp and uh, you can see that uh, well we have got like a map here and uh, we, we have got like a window and everything seems nice but one thing we will change is that uh, let me press uh, uh, e, I'll go here and we'll add a new file here which we'll call player uh, dot h Alright, uh, we'll do that and then we'll add another file here called player.cpp and we'll open that up as well uh, and we'll also open up player.h. Now uh, in player.h firstly let's just add a quick little uh, include guard uh, uh, underscore player underscore h. So uh, we're going to add that and uh, uh, of course in here uh, what we'll need to do is that actually yeah so uh, with that we have got like our player here and uh, we'll need to have the functionality for drawing the player as well as uh, like uh, you know uh, actually handling the player's functionality in here so in order to do that let's uh, go here and create a new class here and I'm going to just call it player now uh, what this class will do is it will have uh, like a uh, let's first of all create a public void called uh, draw which will take an ff comma colon render target uh, and uh, just call it target and this will draw the player to that render target and remember this will draw the player into review so this is kind of for our mini map not for our actual you know uh, main map here that's not the reason we are drawing this so yeah you can see we've got our uh, draw function here with the render target and uh, that's pretty awesome so yeah this means that uh, like uh, we've got the functionality here for actually drawing the player of uh, not the functionality but we have created the function and the next thing we'll do is we'll create an ff colon, colon vector to f which we'll call position and uh, a float which we'll call angle so yeah the player is basically going to have like a single position as represented as a single vector 2 and then of course a float that will be then the angle of the player since this is 2D the player can only rotate in one direction. So yeah that's pretty awesome uh, but one more thing we'll need to add is an update function and of course the update function will take a float here called delta time because uh, well uh, we need delta time here of course in order to make sure our game runs correctly on every frame rate. So yeah in main.cpp we are going to use sf clock for uh, the actual you know uh, thing here I'm going to create an sf colon colon clock here called uh, clock. Uh, and uh, let's actually call it game clock because the name clock sometimes gives some problems. Anyways, uh, we'll go here and uh, actually let's uh, let's move it from here. Let's uh, move this line from up there to here because this will actually you know uh, uh, make sure that our clock is uh, you know instantiated at the correct time. So in here we'll go ahead and say float delta time is equal to clock uh, game clock actually. Uh, game clock game clock dot uh, restart dot as seconds so this will give us our delta time as seconds and it, of course it will uh, automatically restart the clock every frame which means that uh, you know our actual uh, delta time will basically uh, represent the amount of time passed in a frame so with that done now we can go under player to actually let's uh, first of all create a player here uh, we've got our map we'll create a player here called player uh, player uh, actually called player and uh, uh, in with this player we'll just uh, of course when we are drawing this after drawing the map we'll say map dot draw uh, actually not map dot draw uh, sorry uh, we'll say player dot draw and we'll pass it our window as a target and uh, we'll also update the player here before we begin drawing stuff so we'll say player dot update and we'll pass in our delta time uh, like that and yeah that should uh, call the methods correctly of course currently these are not implemented so we need to now do that so yeah in order to do that let's uh, let's go ahead and implement these methods so I'm going to uh, copy this here 
and uh, uh, let's go under player.cvp in here first thing of course we need to include player.h here actually and uh, we'll also need to include uh, i'll include sf uh, sfml slash uh, graphics slash render target and all right we after we have done that in uh, inside of this we'll just uh, uh, say void player col colon and i'm going to paste this and uh, yeah that will uh, implement the draw function here and in here with the target all we need to do for drawing i'll create an sf colon colon circle shape uh, circle shape actually if it is we can create that called uh, circle and uh, we'll need to include here sfml slash graphics slash circle shape and uh, this circle will represent our actual player so we'll take the circle and we'll say uh, you know when we initialize the circle so uh, we could pass it like a radius so we'll pass a radius of for example uh, 5 here and then we, what we'll say is the circle dot set position and we'll set our position of the circle to the actual position of the player so this uh, position member variable that we have got and then in the end we'll just draw this by saying uh, target dot draw and we'll pass it our position all right, that's pretty awesome. Uh, actually, uh, oh, uh, sorry, not position. Uh, we'll pass it our circle here, and after that, we'll go under player dot h and implement update uh, because, well, of course, in the update method, all we need to do is just uh, handle movement and stuff. So we'll say void player colon colon and we'll paste this here. And uh, uh, with the update, um, we are going to, of course, as I said before, we are going to handle the player input. So that means that we actually need to get the input. So SF colon colon keyboard colon colon is key press. This will be the function that we'll use. And for the key, we'll say SF colon colon keyboard. Uh, and the key we'll use is, for example, A for moving left. And uh, uh, well, actually, we'll use A for turning left and D for turning right. And then W for moving uh, forward and uh, F for moving backwards, let's say. Uh, actually, we don't really need moving backwards. Uh, we'll add that anyway. So yeah, uh, we'll basically create like a first person kind of uh, controls but with the only the keyboard uh, so if you want of course we can implement the mouse later on so that you can use the mouse to look around anyways if this key is pressed uh, then we'll just say uh, well let's say angle uh, actually before we do that uh, I'm going to go up here and create two const expression float uh, here and I'm going to call this uh, mm, uh, turn speed and we are going to set this to some value uh, we'll, we'll fine tune the values later uh, and we'll also create a float called move speed so yeah these will be basically uh, representing the speed actually and I am going to basically say angle plus equal our turn speed multiplied by delta time so when we press a we actually uh, should decrease the angle because it's moving left so yeah this uh, will decrease the angle and uh, I'm going to uh, copy this and paste this here and uh, in here uh, actually that was a mistake uh, so in here uh, what we'll do is we'll just uh, add to the angle but we'll check for uh, d as a keyboard key so um, that will allow us to look both left and right and uh, now I'm going to go here and paste this and this will be different because uh, uh, this time we'll be checking for W and when W is pressed we'll basically not be you know uh, adding the uh, angle we'll adding to the we'll be adding to the position so in order to add to the position first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to uh, well we'll need to actually figure out what values we need to add for both the X and Y and the reason uh, we need to do that separately is because uh, uh, you know currently we have got like a uh, yeah, you know angle here which can be different depending on where the player is looking and of course we want to move forward in that angle and not just to move forward anywhere so we need to figure out how to do that so in here for, uh, first thing we we'll need to do is we will need to convert our angle which is in uh, degrees to our angle which is, will be in radians so uh, actually we will create a const expression float here which we will just call uh, pi and we will set this to our actual you know this value here and uh, uh, yeah so this will be our pi value and uh, we will use uh, the simple formula for converting our angle to radians so we'll say float uh, radians and we'll set this equal to and uh, uh, we are going to basically take our angle that we have already got and multiply it by pi divided by 180 
so after this the next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to uh, increment our position accordingly so we'll take our position dot x and add to it uh, our, the cos of our radians so we'll basically take the cos of that and then we'll take our position dot y and add to it the sine uh, sine of our radians like that and uh, yeah that uh, that should uh, do it that should essentially cause our uh, player to move in the correct direction so in order to test this out uh, let's go here and i'm going to uh, when you go to create our player i'm going to just set its uh, position to be uh, something like uh, ff column vector 2f uh, let's just say uh, 50 by 50 for example and now let's go here and run this uh, by running uh, make and what you should see is that we get a small white dot here and if I press uh, well if I actually uh, there was a little bit of a problem here uh, which is that I actually forgot to uh, set one thing here one critical thing which is that we forgot to multiply this by delta time so we of course need to multiply this by delta time here in order to prevent it from just flying out of control and now let's run make and uh, you can see that player is really small and but you can see it here and uh, if I press W you can see it moves very very slowly so of course our uh, speed is very uh, slow here and I'm going to just set this to 100 kind of and as far as this speed is concerned uh, let's just set it to uh, I don't know let's set it to 120 so yeah let's uh, actually run that and uh, uh, you can see that uh, well it's still quite slow and uh, it's actually moving amazingly slow still now and the reason for that is quite simple uh, we actually are need to multiply this uh, with our uh, move speed as well so we'll take the sign and multiply that by our move speed move speed here all right so that's pretty cool now let's go ahead and run make and hopefully now it should work so yeah you can see that now we can move the player and uh, uh, yeah it's somewhat better I guess but uh, well uh, there are a couple of things that we need to change but we'll change those things in the next video so yeah guys stay tuned for that make sure to like and subscribe as well so you don't miss the next one in which you'll finalize the movement and share this video with other people as well and I'll see you in the next one and bye